My Little Pony has been going on since the 1980s, with every new incarnation bringing something new to the table. Generation 4 was no different, as it was able to target both demographics while the previous struggled in finding a thin line between the two. Unfortunately, just like the shows that came before it, it had to come to an end while the next pony generation was put into motion. My Little Pony, A New Generation, the fifth installment to the long-running franchise that was able to fill in the pony hole in our hearts that we seem to have lost after Friendship is Magic concluded. Many things have tried to take its place with mixing results in terms of quality. No, does anyone still play that? You're trying way too hard at this point. Oh hell no, oh wait, that was actually pretty successful. My bad. When it comes to Generation 4, it seemed to have been milked by its corporate overlords who do give the final say on anything and everything that goes on with the My Little Pony brand. Because of this, Friendship is Magic itself seemed to be very mixed in terms of quality as most of its later seasons felt very off compared to the simple structure of its earlier ones. Some would argue that its later episodes lost the magic of what made the show special to begin with. And after some deep thinking and some very competitive formal discussions with my friends, I don't care what, what? Says. The, yes. the movie, yes. the movie, 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 well today, viewers, I have a special treat for you as we are going to try to get to the bottom of this debate as I'm Tootsie Forever and this is going to be one hell of a long video. Cue the dramatic intro music. Now, diving into an answer for this question will be no easy task, as I do have a theory for what might have been the result. So, please join me on this hunt as we are going to speedrun and go over the very long 9 season run of Friendship is Magic to try and pinpoint the exact moment the Friendship Express went off the rails. The best way to start this off is to start at the beginning with Lauren Faust, as she is the original creator of the series, which first aired on October 10th, 2010, with My Little Pony Adventures. The first 26 episodes of the series had to introduce audiences to the new characters, the world that they inhabited, and change the girly nature from its previous incarnations. The writers had to develop unique stories that centered around each of the main six characters that all represent a different face of friendship. Twilight Sparkle, Pinkie Pie, Applejack, Rainbow Dash, Rarity, and Fluttershy. These six ponies all got their own designated episodes to flush out who they are as characters as we understand their motivations and problems. We get to know each pony individually, and sometimes all of them at once, as it was always a nice treat to see the other characters appear in the same episode, writing about what they learned and helping each other out as they all learned new things about friendship, really hammering in the theme that fits so well with the compelling conflicts, the strong characterizations, silly humor, believable writing, colorful animation, all mixed into an adventure setting that was so down-to-earth and straightforward that made you feel happy no matter what mood, age, or gender while watching it. This show was able to balance itself perfectly on that thin gender line that we talked about in the beginning. Lauren Faust was determined to challenge the existing My Little Pony's girly nature, creating more in-depth characters in an adventurous setting that expanded upon with what worked in the previous season, while also talking with Hasbro in order to figure out how to market the My Little Pony toy line. 
Season 2 took more risks as it developed the characters more by testing them in different type of situations, which are scattered throughout each episode as not only do the main six have to struggle with their friendship lessons, but also with their own personal battles, trying to balance them all in between some actual threats to Equestria. Not only are they just friends, but their friendship could also mean something more to Equestria than they are currently aware of. The characters would grow just like their friendship, as it would be tested when they go up against real threats, like Discord, the god of chaos and the only villain who came the closest to breaking the main six apart. Let's skip ahead to the finale, where an evil shapeshifter named Queen Chrysalis would infiltrate the capital of Equestria by sneaking in undetected, disguising herself as a princess who was set to marry... <gasps> Twilight's brother! She would have gotten away with it too, if it wasn't for that meddling pony Twilight Sparkle. Of course, this would all pay off in the end as it turned out to be one of the show's most viewed episodes, being praised and garnering positive reviews from fans and critics alike. With all of this going on, behind the scenes tensions would rise to a boiling point with the show's creator, Lauren Faust, who would be constantly butting heads with Hasbro over creative differences that would eventually lead her to step down from her own show that she created. Despite leaving, she still had high hopes for the staff members, commenting, The gaps I have left are being filled by the same amazing artists, writers, and directors who brought you season one. I am certain the show will be as entertaining as ever. The third season would be done a bit differently from the other two, as instead of containing 26 episodes like its predecessor, it would only contain 13 smaller ones, which did cause a little bit of panic in its fanbase out of fear that the show was being cancelled. This season would have put the spotlight on Twilight Sparkle's character, as she would be the main focus to be tested throughout the whole season. Twilight herself has demonstrated positive leadership qualities that went above and beyond Celestia's expectations of her student, leading Twilight Sparkle to an attempt to solve an unsolvable mystery that would eventually lead her into becoming an alicorn as well as being crowned one of the newest toys in Equestria. Which would have been a neat little bow to end the show, as this was originally made to be the end of the show. One of the big reasons why this season was much shorter than the other two was because the staff was split up into two teams. Team 1 would continue working on the third season of Friendship is Magic, while Team 2 focused their efforts on a top secret project that was given to them by Hasbro. More on that soon. The other reasoning is it was developed in mind to be the end of the show itself. M.A. Larson, the writer of the finale, Magical Mystery Cure, stated in an interview, um, that when I was writing that script, it was the end of the show. That was the final episode. And then two or three months after, I turned in my locked script. Surprise! Season four! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to a good development team and an unusual fan base, skyrocketing toy sales, Hasbro knew they had something on their hooves as they decided to greenlight it and continue it with the fourth installment. And that top secret project that I mentioned before became known as the first Equestria Girls movie, which spun off its own line of sequels, specials, toys, and even a small online series that, from what I heard, was pretty good. It didn't leave much of an impact on the official My Little Pony series, besides an occasional reference here or there, which is why it won't be brought up throughout this video. This season starts off right after the events of the previous finale, where Twilight Sparkle is now a full-blown sellout. I mean Alicorn. Some elements of this season were made to center around this new birth of Twilight, as she comes to terms with this recent change of power. She is trying to adjust to the latest status of being the Princess of Friendship and what that title truly means. In addition to removing the letters to Princess Celestia back in the second season, the main characters now keep a collective journal to document their experiences for future generations. You know, just not for a new generation. New elements were added, like the appearance of special guests joining in the magical world of Equestria, like Weird Al Yankovic as a party pony who is not, if not, crazier than Pinkie Pie. Vince Tong reprising his role as the pony version of Flash Century from Equestria Girls. 
Graham Vercheer from Supergirl and The Good Doctor, who voices the adorable Pipsqueak. And Mark Atchison, who brings a threatening voice to a terrifyingly frightening villain. After a heavily lore-induced season premiere providing some much-needed backstory for Discord and both princesses, Twilight and her friends would uncover a locked magical chest that could only be opened with six magical keys centered around the elements of harmony. These key episodes would primarily focus on each of the main six having to overcome a difficult task to receive their corresponding key, as this season would have its first overarching season plot. This would all be concluded in the finale against the villainous T-Rex that features Discord's betrayal after being reformed in Season 3, along with high stakes, a more serious tone, and an all-out Dragon Ball style inspired fight, which is still being praised by the community and hated by mothers to this day. But who cares? That fight was balls to the walls with all the explosions. <laughs> Overall, it was just amazing! The show's fifth season still features Twilight continuing her task of learning about what it means to be a princess, but she's not alone, she's got her friends. They soon discover that her new castle, which magically sprung out of that locked chest from the previous season, it's magic, don't question it, I gave up long ago. This new product placement includes a magical map that displays and locates friendship issues across the land and sends the correct corresponding character that's best suited for the job to fix said problem. Sometimes both mixing and matching different ponies depending on what their task could entail. The show would continue to focus more on these booty calls for the remainder of its runtime as the writers wanted to explore new areas that were mentioned in previous episodes. In the season premiere, they all get called to a town discovered on the friendship map where they discover all of the pony citizens have equal signs as their kitty marks, run by this season's villain, Starlight Glimmer. After her plans are foiled by the friendship gang, she would appear frequently throughout the background, keeping tabs on Twilight Sparkle. Other stories would include Twilight coping with the loss of the original library that was destroyed in her last season fight, the CMC finally earning their cutie marks in a big musical episode in a significant milestone for the cartoon series as it would be celebrating the show surpassing 100 episodes that would mainly be focusing on the background characters that were made popular by the fanbase. The Starlight Glimmer would appear yet again in the finale to exact her revenge on Twilight Sparkle and her friends for ruining her town. She would somehow obtain a magical spell that would allow her to travel back in time. What? Twilight would pursue after her and the two ponies would do battle, splitting countless god who knows how many multiversal timelines in the process, all with the sole intention of ruining Twilight's bond with her friends. And what's her primarily motivation for doing all of this? She got dumped. Ooh. Starlight is best villain. I will totally 100% respect Starlight Glimmer as a villain, as not even Twilight Sparkle could stop her. Instead, she would talk with her and convince her about the friend zone not being so bad, and would even take the young unicorn under her wing to learn about the magic of friendship as a student of her own. Woohoo! Friendship prevails! Following the previous events, Glim Glam would be added as an unofficial main character to the cast. Many welcomed this new reformed villain to the team, while others greatly disapproved of her. You see, when a show is starting to decline in the ratings, another character is added to the main cast to change it up a bit, which rarely ever works unless the writers can take their time with the character. So, whose idea was it anyway to add Starlight as a main cast member? Was it Hasbro that demanded more Glam Glam? Actually, no. It was the show staff who had the idea to include Starlight Glimmer as a seventh main character. You see, Starlight Glimmer's role was meant to explore more of an ongoing arc to expand upon what it takes to earn redemption. This is why she was given more screen time as she would now receive her own episodes throughout the series run. 
In the season premiere, she played a significant role in reconnecting with her ex-boyfriend. She gets a new girlfriend that isn't Twilight, learns about the spirit of the holidays by not wanting to freeze everyone, and has to make her new friends all brain dead just to hang out with them. All I have to do is bring up my little pony and all my friends are already brain dead. If I had friends. Anyways, excluding the premiere and the finale, Starlight Glimmer only received three episodes to flesh out her character that mostly flushed her down the toilet. No disrespect to anyone who's a fan of Glim Glam, it's just uh, she felt very rushed as they didn't give her enough time to properly grow on us like the real main characters did. Speaking of the main six, in the finale, they were all conveniently captured off screen, leading Starlight Glimmer to form a team of her own to take down the returning villain, Queen Chrysalis, along with her new girlfriend, Discord, and Thorax, a good changeling who was introduced earlier this season. I'm sure he won't play anything significant. Season 7 was made in mind with an attempt of returning back to basics as it tries to recapture what worked in earlier seasons. Developing the characters while focusing on small scale stories instead of another overarching season plot. It was such a breath of fresh air to start the season off with something lighthearted and straightforward instead of the usual big bad formula we've all come to expect by now. Unfortunately, this season's episodes were a mixed bag in terms of quality, as you would have to sit through two or three honest apples before being rewarded with a couple of perfect pairs. Oh, that episode was so good. All of the main characters got their own time to shine in their own designated standalone episodes. Some had their issues, but I don't believe any of them were just downright horrible. Starlight Glimmer finally got some much needed improvements after being rushed through the last season. They even gave her some excellent interactions with new and old returning characters, finally earning her that worthy spot to the cast. The season started off iffy with some less than stellar episodes. The less we remember Flurry Heart, the better, as this would be the second time that she would be aborted by the writers, just like Thorax after they reformed the Changelings. They had no use for him and tossed him in the trash bin, as this show has no idea what to do with its characters after their arcs are finished. I told you he wouldn't play anything significant. M.A. Larson would return once again to write one of the show's most notorious episodes. Twilight Sparkle would decide to take the friendship journals from season 4 and publish them into a book so everyone can learn about friendship. However, this starts to backfire as now everyone's starting to nitpick and critique the main characters. Kinda reminds me of someone else I know in this fandom. The season tried to focus more on world building, but the problem is is that there was already so much history and lore within the show that it just felt very convoluted, like the Pillars. Ah, the Pillars, the original protectors of Equestria before the finding of the Elements of Harmony. I can't wait to learn about them in the season finale. Wait, this is the season finale. Well, I can't wait to learn about them next season. <laughs> right? Right? Fuck! But first, we have to talk about... Now, between the events of Seasons 7 and 8, the long-awaited My Little Pony the Movie would be released to theaters in 2017. And despite being ripped apart by critics, it was still considered a box office success. With the movie turning over such a huge profit in ticket sales and of course, toy sales, it brought a bunch of new fans to hop on the friendship horse as we all galloped into the show's 8th season with exceedingly high expectations. Season 8 would begin, and within the first 10 seconds of its opening premiere, it would be confirmed that everything that took place in the 90-minute film would have an effect on the rest of the season, as it would be confirmed to be 100% canon. Due to those unfortunate events during the film, Twilight Sparkle realizes that there are more threats out there that they're not prepared for, and decides to open up a school of friendship to teach and gain trust with neighboring allies. Wait a second, did I read that right? No! No, it's just stupid! 
I don't understand. Why does Twilight have to do this? Why didn't Princess Celestia or Princess Luna form allies with the other nations? This is basic nation building. I don't understand. Oh, the season's gonna break me. The students attending the school would include different types of species that were already established in the film or earlier seasons. Like a dragon, who is a guy for Spike. A hyperactive hippogriff to remind you to watch the movie. A griffin who is gay shipped with this student for some reason. Phantom, explain yourself. A changeling who is just there. And a yak who just wants to smash. Now, let's just do a quick recap of the current characters who have their own story. Not only do we have specific episodes that focus on each of the main six, including Spike, Starlight Glimmer, along with the Cutie Mark Crusaders, but they are also still dealing with the friendship quests, and now, the newly involved Student Six with their own School of Friendship episodes. Kind of overkill, don't you think? My head hurts. I think I'm getting too old for this show. And here I thought this season was going to be good. You know what? I take it all back. That is what saved Season 8. That is what's keeping Season 8 afloat. Most of these episodes would be combined with mixing results in terms of quality, as some episodes became very predictable and rarely surprised anyone with all the foreshadowing that was going on. Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious. Not only that, but when the main characters are written to be dumb or stupid to make other characters look better, that is an insult and a slap to the face of all the character growth they went through over the years. The finale is a prime example of this, as it was a no-brainer that the new character, Cozy Glow, a filly who has appeared frequently throughout the season, was scheming something of her own. No shit! Her cutie mark is a chess piece! How did nobody see this coming? What that scheme was exactly is probably listed in the comments, as I get that she wanted to use friendship as power, but I still have no idea what her plan was other than to take over the school of friendship and get rid of magic, for whatever reason. It was never explained. What? That is just mind-bogglingly stupid as most kids try to run away from school, let alone want to run it! For all of its flaws, Season 8 did include some good moments, as I really enjoyed the Student 6 and wish we got more of them just hanging out with one another, chilling like friends. Spike getting wings felt like a long overdue character growth and not a shark jumping moment. And let us not forget about the previously mentioned Kirins, which let alone saved this season from being totally forgettable. Well, viewers, the time has come, as it would be confirmed that Season 9 would in fact be the last leg of Friendship is Magic. Well, with that being said, let's all just hope this pony goes out with a bang. Jesus! This season focuses on Twilight learning and preparing to become the new ruler of Equestria after both princesses die. My bad, they retire. Meanwhile, a new character frees and teams up with previous villains to take control of Equestria. The returning villains include T-Rex making his grand return from Season 4, Queen Chrysalis, and Cozy Glow, who is probably the weakest out of all the rogues gallery as she never wanted to take over Equestria in the first place. But whatever, they all work together to team up to take down Twilight and her friends by using the same lessons to turn friendship into actual power. This
Now, back to the original question of this video. What happened to Friendship is Magic? My theory for why it started to dip in quality could be the result of multiple different issues. First, series veterans were no longer part of the writing team as they wanted to go on to other projects, leaving the new writing staff to not fully understand what these characters were about. Speaking of the characters, new ones were being added and introduced that felt rushed or had little to no development. Big Jim Miller, a series veteran, stated they wanted to flesh out the new characters they had, but couldn't as Hasbro would introduce more characters, such as the Pillars and the Students, which is why some characters got tossed aside after their introduction. The 2017 film made things a little complicated, as making it canon resulted in a lackluster tie-in with the main series that created a lot of inconsistencies and confusions for the new and old viewers. Even that decision could have been influenced by one or more higher-ups having the final say on everything and anything to increase profits for the My Little Pony brand. My guess is once these toy sales started to decline, Hasbro saw this and decided maybe it's best to reboot the series once again and start fresh with a new cast of characters, developers, and team members. All of this must have been put into motion back in 2017, as that's when the Friendship is Magic staff knew that the series was going to be concluding. So remember that the next time you're watching the film, as we're all hyping up the movie and they're already hard at work on the final season of Friendship is Magic. We did get one hell of an introduction to the new generation with a much better film than the 2017 Pony movie, as it was such a breath of fresh air to get something new and different as we have a new team of creators at the helm. Don't get me wrong, I will always love Friendship is Magic until the day I die, but I'm also excited to see something new and different done with this long-running franchise. Maybe you feel the same way or disagree with everything that I've said throughout this video, and that's perfectly fine. I'm only human, after all. I'm Tootsie Forever, and thank you all so much for not only watching this video, but all of my videos throughout the years. Unfortunately, due to a new career change, I've decided to go after my dream job of becoming a truck driver, so this channel will be put on indefinite hiatus until I decide to come back. I still love My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, and will always keep it close to my heart, and I hope you will too, as I'm Tootsie Forever, and thank you all so very much for watching all my videos, liking, commenting, and subscribing. You may not think I read those comments, but believe me, I do. But thank you all so much, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you for watching.